we were given exclusive access into RAF Wittering to visit the Station Heritage Centre. RAF Wittering, the home of the Harrier, was once thriving with Harriers from a fighter squadron and a conversion unit. Today, inside RAF Wittering is a Station Heritage Centre, which has four Harriers, two cockpit sections, nostalgia and more from the Harrier era. There is even a Grob Tutor inside to symbolise today's activity at the base. The Heritage Centre is not open to the public, but it relies on donations to keeping it maintained. The donations include actual sections of aircraft, refurbished parts and genuine parts that have been kindly donated. There is even a fifth area belonging to the Heritage Center, but that is of course today's Gate Guardian. But don't worry, I won't mention her name. If you haven't already, please watch the Home of the Harrier Part 1 and subscribe to my channel and follow Ted Coningsby on his wonderful adventures. Maintaining the Heritage Center is also a time-consuming full-time job, from filling tires up with special foam to stopping the tires from deteriorating to general upkeep of the center. The Station Heritage Center is a remarkable tribute to all ex and serving members of RAF Wittering, especially those associated with the Harrier. The Harrier was developed from the Hawker Sidley Kestrel. The Station Heritage Centre has a very early Harrier. It's one up from the Kestrel, but it isn't a Mark I Harrier. So this is a pre-production Mark I Harrier, and there were only six of them ever made. There is another one at Brooklyn's Museum. The Harrier can hover for a maximum of 90 seconds. In this amount of time, it would have used 150 gallons of water to keep the engine cool. Calm down, Ted. This is why you could see water vapor from the thrust nozzles. The Harrier had only one jet engine, but the four nozzles were able to direct the jet engine thrust, making the aircraft hover. So this is XV779, a GR3. It used to be the Gate Guardian and had service in Belize from 1975 to 1993. As a Gate Guardian, it didn't have a refueling probe, but the generosity of donations allowed this GR3 to have a refueling probe. It is actually a Sea Harrier probe, but they are almost identical. The GR3s of one fighter squadron here at RAF Wittering served the Falklands War and were on the SS Atlantic conveyor on deck with the Sea Harrier. XV779 was originally built as a GR1 and delivered to the RAF in May 1970. It was subsequently converted to a GR3 when the Harrier fleet was upgraded. It operated with Free Squadron at both RAF Wildenruf and Gutersloh in 1970 and 1980s. It suffered a belly landing in 1974 after hydraulic failure. It held the position of Gate Guardian for over 20 years before being replaced by a GR9 in April of 2011. And you know, who has this position now?
This canopy was damaged by a bird strike. The Heritage Centre also displays the armament that the Harriers carried, such as the Maverick missile there. Oi, oi, Ted! We have here the cockpit section, so uh, to the left is the American AV-8B and to the right of that was the GR-7. Careful Ted, those fins are sharp. Section of the engineer to show how it looks from the inside. Someone must have spent a lot of time cutting away at that. This is the emblem of 233 Operational Conversion Unit, which was renumbered to 20 Reserve Squadron on the 1st of September 1992. On the 1st of April 2020 Squadron and other RAF Harrier Squadrons, along with the Royal Navy Sea Harriers, were brought under the control of the Joint Force Harrier. 20 Reserve Squadron sadly disbanded on the 31st of March 2010. This is the Harrier T4. This is what the Royal Air Force called the family version because it's a two-seater. The first flight of the Harrier was in 1967. Being a VTOL aircraft of its kind, it has taken over 40 years for another VTOL aircraft to be in use, the F-35B. Unlike the F-35B, the Harrier was subsonic and did not have reheats. Serving us proudly in the Falklands, in June 1982, 12 GR3 Harriers of one fighter squadron were flown from RAF Wittering via Ascension Island and mid-air refuelling with Victor tankers on an 8,000 mile journey to the Falklands in 17 hours, which set an RAF record. On the 27th of May 1982, our RAF Wittering legend Big Bob squadron leader, later group captain Bob Iverson, was hit by anti-aircraft fire and he ejected seconds before his GR3 exploded in mid-air near Goose Green. He evaded capture for nearly three days before being rescued by helicopter. Today, at RAF Wittering, they fly the Tutor. Now, although it's not a Harrier, we mustn't forget the work that is done today. Number 16 Squadron is part of Number 3 Flying Training School and provide elementary flying training to the next generation of RAF pilots. The squadrons of Number 6 Flying Training School teach qualified pilots to become flying instructors, deliver elementary flying training to University Air Squadron students and give air cadets their first flying experiences. They could be our next Typhoon Display Pilots. This year's Harrier Display Pilot is Flight Lieutenant Gary Waterfall from 20 Reserve Squadron at RAF Wittering. 